Welcome once again to The Breakfast here on PLOS TV Africa. It's time for Off the Press and this morning we are kicking off with The Nation newspapers just before we introduce our guest. Uh, share with you some of the big stories. It's going to be on your screen in a few seconds. Uh, yes, there you have it. It says here, Lawan, Bajabia Mila, Adamu. Southern governors wrong. Igbo Utes, North, uh, North minority reps, La Doja, OK call for national dialogue and restructuring. Police station raised, suspects, uh, suspects freed in another attack by gunmen. Also 2.9 million IDPs in Nigeria, says UN agency. Ex-Ecomog commander, uh, General Dongoyaro, dies at 80. We can also find on the nation this morning, company income tax grew by 97 billion naira in uh, quarter one. And uh, Ohaneza is saying, don't set Igbos against Yorubas. Sultan tells Buhari and governors to end insecurity. Also on the nation this morning, experts seek more investment in agriculture for food security. Military to vaccinate IDPs and prison inmates. Also four killed by customs men in Oyo. Those are the big ones on the nation newspapers this morning. And uh, on the Guardian newspaper, Knox, kudos for anchor borough scheme in Southwest. Scheme in corruption prone, says Oyo, AFAN chairman. Our biggest challenge in Ondo is herdsman Akimbi declares Oyo getting set to, to access Anchor Borah's scheme, says Raji. We released 1.8 billion naira to 8,757 beneficiaries in Ogun, CBN insists. Ondo farmers misro trade words over fraud allegation. Also on the Guardian newspaper, uh, proposed national carrier gets $250 million lifeline. Lagos community alleges headsmen invade farmlands, attack cows. Nigerian celebrates Eid Fitri in darkness as outrage persists. Africa's COVID-19 testing declines as deadly variant spreads. COVID-19 cases surpass 4.66 million, 22.4 million Africans vaccinated. NPHCDA silence and dates of next batch of AstraZeneca 6 equitable access to vaccines. Those are the stories on the Guardian newspaper. All right, now on the Daily Independent, uh, let's see what we can find. How rice exports can earn Nigeria $15 billion yearly, says uh, investors. Again, gunmen Bon Abia police station, free detainees. Buhari pledges action against bandits and th uh, threat to food security. Appeals for more understanding with his administration. Also this morning, Taraba Emir um, acts uh, subject to confront bandits. Federal government to resuscitate special terrorism prosecution courts. We can also find on the Daily Independent this morning, open grazing ban critics have a hidden agenda, says Governor Otom. Hale's southern counterpart's bold step to address insecurity. Another gas explosion rocks Abelkota on Salah Day. And also why we wanted harmonization in Edo PDP, that is from Idahosa. Uh, Obasaki demands a letter withdrawal and apology from Edo PDP chair. Um, well, I think these are the ones that we can share uh, this morning from Daily Independent. All right, on the Punch newspaper, President's plea for understanding. Buhari, ignorance, full of excuses, says PDP, ACF, PANDEF, others. Ordering weapons, training troops in usage ta takes time, says Buhari. Nigerians tired of your endless stream of excuses, PDP tells president. Understand plights of kidnapped victims paying heavy ransom. That's according to the ACF. Above the headline on the Punch newspaper, foreign sponsors driving Nigeria's infrastructure project, says World Bank. NLC backs Nupeng, kicks against petrol subsidy removal. Three refineries processed no crude in January. That's according to the NNPC. Restructure your states, stop regional campaign, Lawan tells governors. Below the headline on the Punch newspaper, protest as customs men kill five Salah font seekers in Oyo. Rumored Lagos IPOP planned attack meant to cause division. That's according to Ohanese. Buhari, others mourn as ex chief of defense staff dies at 80. Wife seeks help as Ondo pastors abducts, abductors demand 30 million naira. 
Screening begins at 21,000, battle for 5,000 Ogun teaching slots. And lastly, on the Punch newspaper, federal government to revive special terrorism prosecution court soon. And that's according to Malami. Uh, good morning, Mr. Jide Johnson, Chief Lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Thanks for joining us. It's a pleasure to be with you this morning. All right. So there's so many stories here on, on, the, on the papers we've seen from, you know, the South, Southern governors and all the criticism and even praise for the banning of open grazing in Nigeria to just like uh, criticism of the president, Muhammadu Buhari, uh, by lots of groups, the PDP, the ACF, the PANDEF, saying the president is just ignorant and full of excuses. Oof. Where yeah, would you like to come in? Well, um, if the speaker that is from the Southwest is totally against what the governors of the South have done, we can agree with what the Senate president has said. And that's why right. we have clamored for term limit, which is something that has to be this. Both the speaker, the speaker had been in the House of Reps since 2003. Lawan had been in the National Assembly since 1999. And they are far away from reality because they they've been feeding on 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 public on public office. The, the easiest way for you to escape poverty in Nigeria and in Africa is for you to have access to public uh, public office. Seventeen governors from the south met and they came up with a resolution. This is the first time they are meeting in recent memory. Regularly, the nineteen governors of the north. They meet regularly and they come up with resolution. I have never seen Lawa or Bajabi Amila raise any issue to that effect. Now, for the first time, the southern governors in recent memory met and they came up with a lot of issues that is affecting us. And in that resolution, we are seeing um, the Senate president and um, the Speaker of the House of Rep disagreeing with them. What they should have done is to look at what are the issues that they have faced. What are the things we can do? And collectively, we find solution to the problem. Instead of them of thinking on how to work with the governors so that there can be solution to the numerous problems we have, they are criticizing, they are criticizing them. And that's the, the reality of, of our country. And I challenge the Senate president and the speaker of House of Rep for them to take a tour of Nigeria without, even with their security, um, details. Let them take a tour of all the states and all the local government in Nigeria and let us see whether their world view will change or whether their world view will remain the same. They are far away from reality and that's why they can criticize the governors who happens to be at the state level and who day in day are, are receiving security report to that effect. Definitely there will be people that will give knocks to the governor for them coming together. And for some of us, we think it's a step in the right direction. And this meeting should become a recurrent feature because the Northern governors, just about two weeks ago, the Northern governors went and met the president and they had a meeting with the president. I hope the presidency also will have a meeting with the Southern governor. They should make a demand for it. And the speaker and the Senate president should also call for a meeting. Instead of coming to the pages of newspaper or using the media platforms to criticize them for taking a All step. Right. In the right in the right direction they move above partisan ill to solve that particular uh, problem so that's my take um, all right there, there's a, a follow-up to, uh, to that story uh, that um, it says the Igbo youths uh, not minority reps and Ladoja okay call for national dialogue uh, so let, let's talk a little bit um, about that you know the conversation about um, a national dialogue once again we've had one in the past um, no, really. because we run away from reality and we are playing the ostrich. And that's the reality of our political system. Unfortunately, the present government at the national level and that controls most of the state, while they were in opposition, they were clamoring for restructuring. They were calling for changes in the system. Um, it was the party that believed that the present structure is not right. And unfortunately for us, that party got to power. And that party has been playing lip service to restructuring. Let me give you an example. It's the issue of local government. 1999 constitution did not make exclusive provision for the local government. 
The local government is left at the mercy of national, at the state house of assembly, which is an appendage of the office of the governor. So in some states, we don't have local government election. What we have as sole administrator, um, just last week, the Supreme Court ruled that the solution of the local government by the Oyo state governor was illegal. So at, we don't have that structure. In Lagos State, I recall, the Lagos was in the forefront of fighting PDP, particularly of our social administration, when Tinubu created the 37 LCDs and 20 local government. I hope and I thought that with APC in power, those 37 ACEs will have been listed in the fifth schedule of the 1999 constitution. The 1999 constitution is an aberration. It's, it's a product of 1995 constituent assembly, which brought about, which was meant to perpetuate Apache in power, which concentrated too much power in the presidency. In the present structure, the presidency is so powerful. It's so, it's so powerful that all other agencies of government, the, we saw how the presidency successfully removed the, the, the chief justice of the federation. We saw how successfully removed the chief justice of the federation. We, we, you could see how the speaker of the House of Rep and the Senate president, how they dance and watch the body language, like we see in our plan, of the presidency before they make any political pronouncement. So there is a need for us to restructure. The longer we deny that fact, the more we are moving away from reality. Mm. Our structure of governance, the sharing for, do we have fiscal federalism? Why must we all go to Abuja to share resources at the end of the month? These are issues that we need to address, and the earlier we address it, the better. So, the so, so you agree have, that there should be... The by the people. So you agree that there should be a national dialogue to bring these things uh, um, uh, to the yeah, table again? There should be. There should, there should be a conversation on how I want to move this nation, nation forward. Hmm. I, I'll just tie it up with this. The National Security Council met in that National Security meeting. 99% of those that attended the meeting were from the North. Only one person was from the South. And you call that National Security meeting? To discuss issue affecting the southeast, even the issue of federal character is not be, is there in the concern. It's not being addressed. Look at the composition of the national security of Nigeria. Is it the Arewa security of Nigeria? So these are issues that we need to address. We can't continue to go in this in this manner. There's a saying in my local dialect: "You don't shave a man's head in his absence. You don't shave a man's head in his absence." And what we are having is that we have we have. A, a, a structure of governance that is not diverse enough, that is not inclusive enough, that is not engaging enough. And so that, that, that's, that's the challenge. And that's what I call the die principle. Until you apply the die principle in whatever you want to do, you cannot succeed from commercial point of view and even from public policy point of view, whether you are commercial or non-commercial, profit or not for profit, private or public enterprise because you must be diverse you must be inclusive and then you must engage for you to succeed hmm. really and there's, there's so much you know the stories here that we've seen on the papers from the 70,000 refugees the united nations agency says in nigeria uh, to 2.9 million idps in the country to a DSS report, I've been seeing, you know, DSS reports these days from, you know, the beginning of May this year, especially, you know, alerting Nigerians and other security agencies to a potential threat to our security. And uh, there's one that says uh, the Ohanese, or rather that IPOB plans to attack Lagos State. But Ohanese Indigbo here is responding to that, saying this, this is just meant to cause division. Uh, what do you think about these stories? Well, um, if... If those security reports are coming from state agencies, what have they done to prevent such threat? And then should such thing come out into the public domain? Um, when it comes to the budget or the finances of security, they don't bring that issue into the public domain. But when it comes to reports of how it affects, um, this report itself can either heighten the tension that is already existing or if it's not existing, create the, the, the tension. Who are the principal actors? 
behind this planned attack? What steps are we taking to prevent such attack from taking place? There will always be threats in any case, in any democratic, in any society, um, whether in, in the United States where we think that they have the highest level of intelligence and sophistication when it comes to security issues. There are domestic terrorists in the United States of America. But what steps are we taking? And then why, why would the report play on ethnicity? Hmm. That, okay, um, the Igbos are planning to... I have asked, it's only from political point of view that we, we, we divide ourselves. Go to the universities. You see people from different parts of Nigeria relating together. Or all you need to do is to go to the markets. Go to different markets and you see Nigeria from all walks of life selling from the north, from the east, from the... It is the political class that use religion, that use ethnicity to divide us. And when you take politics out of it, Nigerians relate better with one another. Yeah, if but... there is that threat, the responsibility of security agencies is to prevent such threat from manifesting. Yeah, That's my um, take on that. Uh, on the also to mention... internally displaced person. If you have 2.9 people internally displaced, do you need anyone to tell you? Do you need rocket science to tell you that there's crisis within the country that has a potential threat? That's the angle which you are looking, which you are looking at. A potential danger is for you to send your reporters to go out. It's there for them to do. You know, when we are off here, you are talking about okay. Before I joined, you are talking about investigative uh, journalism. How journalists that are kind of investigation feel threatened. What is the nature and structure of press freedom in Nigeria? All you need to do is to go to all motor parks and look at the, the people riding Okada in Lagos State, for example. The, the majority of the people riding Okada in Lagos State are not Nigerians. They are from neighboring countries. And most of them are teenagers. Most of them, it's a potential danger. You don't need security agencies to tell you that. Just take your camera and go and record all of this. So you don't need rocket science. So when we have 2.9 million people internally displaced, that tells you that there is a crisis. 2.9 million people internally displaced. It's, it's, it's an indication of the security situation in the country and the DSS and the rest of them. What steps are they taking concerning 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 that? Oh. Let me jump to another story, which the, mm. the, the attorney general of the Federation, the chief law officer of the Federation, said the federal government will resume the special terrorist court. Oh, it's now it's just coming to that reality. It's now the Attorney General is just coming to the reality. The federal government needs to. You know, last week we said, what is the difference between banditry and terrorism? It's just playing on words. A terrorist is a, those that are engaged in banditry, they are domestic terrorists. They should be classified as such. But has there been any prosecution? Has there been any prosecution of any bandit? Rather, we see people that have held public office questioning, providing justification for banditry. We see people that have held, we, we saw a professor that said the southern governors that had them um, NHIS, that southern governors must provide something for land for 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 elders. To, to graze their land, so government must provide land for people running their private business. Will the not will the 19 northern governors provide land for me to run to, to have a pig grip farm in the north? Can I can I can I start a pig grip business in the north? I'm telling you, that's 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 animal husbandry. Can I start it in okay. the north? Uh, that should be the conversation. And I think the governor should have raised it. Can the northern governors provide land for people to run? Pigry in the north. They are collecting money on VAT. Yet they stop the sale and consumption of alcohol in the north. Yet they collect the money of, on VAT for the consumption of those products in the south. So you see the need going back to the issue of restructuring, going back for the need for us to have a conversation on the national dialogue. How do we want to move? How do we want to move this 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 nation forward? Right, when Johnson. you reward criminality, you negotiate with bandits. You give money to bandit. You are telling people it pays more to be a criminal than for you to be law to be law abiding in this country. And that's and that's the danger of of what we have in in, in our system. 
All right. I, I want us to um, backtrack a little bit. Yeah, uh, fantastic. I, I want us to go back a little bit uh, to the conversation on, you know, IPOB and, um, you know, Lagos State and those uh, statements by the DSS. Um, um, it, do you think it's also important that we find out exactly, because, you know, for the longest time, the IPOB never really has had a voice or, or a spokesperson, you know, uh, they've been proscribed and so they, they don't have a recognizable um, voice. Um, and so they can easily be blamed for anything. Um, but do you think it's important that Nigerians know 100% if the IPOB has been a violent group or not? Because they've con constantly denied being responsible for any of the violence in the southeast. Um, one of the stories in the news this morning is about another police station attacked in Abia State, uh, raised rather in Abia, Abia State. Um, we still don't have clarity on who exactly is committing these offenses and attacking security infrastructure in the southeast. Um, so do you think it's important that we, are, first of all, establish who is responsible for these attacks and whether the IPOB truly is being violent before we can name them, you know, as uh, likely to attack Lagos State? Uh, you, uh, I will agree with you that the spirit of violence in the South is has increased tremendously. The attack on critical security infrastructure has increased. But the question we need to ask is, who is the state director of DSS? in the Southeast East. The Commissioner of Police, the State Security Council. You see, the best way to prevent, to stop a crime is to prevent it from happening. That's what is called crime prevention. The best way to stop terrorists is to take counter terrorist action to prevent it from happening. And that has to do with intelligence. That has to do with intelligence. And the question I ask is, what are, what are our intelligence agencies, what are they doing? How can the governors justify the money they spend on security work if you can't get the intelligence that is required for us to know who and who is responsible and there is a systematic attack on critical security infrastructure in the Southeast states? And I think that that has to do with the security agents. Some of these issues, they don't need to bring into the front corner, but they should not give us report on the surface that they are planning to attack. Or the what they should tell us is that we have stopped a plan attack, not that they are planning to attack. That means that we are saying they are planning to attack. That means it's a continuous action. It's an action that is likely to happen in the future. But what steps have you taken to address this issue? And I think these are the areas in which the security, the intelligence community must work on. They must prevent it from happening. They must take counter steps to stop it. So we have the anti-terrorism unit of various intelligence agencies. So what steps are they taking? The people perpetrating this crime against humanity and against the state are not ghosts. They are not ghosts. They are not, how do they move without being, being stopped by, by security? You can't move from one place to the other if carrying arms and the rest of it. What intelligence do they have? The same intelligence they have that IPOB is leaving the Southeast to come and attack Lagos, such intelligence should be used to prevent the attack that is happening in the, in the Southeast. And then if IPOB is leaving the Southeast, you know how many states they will go through? They will go through the South-South. And then before they get, they will go through most of the Southwest state, Southwestern states before they get to Lagos. So what steps have you put in place to stop that? You have custom, you have NDCDC, you have, you have police, you have DSS, you have army, you have military formation. Mm. And I don't know. I, I just I just can't I just can't understand that that clip. If it is there, there's an existential threat to national security, to national infrastructure, to lives and property, those agencies should take steps to prevent it. That's their responsibility. That's why they hired. All right. Mm. So many other stories, really, but I, I don't know if we have time to talk about an NNPC report here that the three refineries in the country produced absolutely no crude oil in the year in in January this year. Well, um, I think the article plan is what we should adopt. What's the article plan? You know, when it was company, it said it was going to privatize NNPC and the rest of. It. And the question you asked, do you have evidence to support that? You saw what the regulation of the broadcast sector 
what it has done to the broadcast sector in Nigeria. The fall of us tends to rely on NTE and the state television. And you saw what it did. We saw what the deregulation of the telecom sector, you know, we saw what it did. The deregulation of the telecom sector, what it brought about competition and improvement in what is happening at that, at that sector. I think that government needs to have a consensus and that that aspect should be run by private enterprise and government should just collect taxes from those enterprises. The money we have, the money that was budgeted for um, turnaround maintainers and innovation of the Portacourt refinery was said that is enough to establish five refineries by some people. And what steps are we taking? If they are producing zero, what does not work? I will end with this illustration, which was given by Professor Jesus when he was talking about an agreement. He said a man planted planted a tree and the tree, a vine tree, the vine was not eaten by he said, okay, what are it? What are it? They said they should cut it off. He said, no, what are it? Dig ground around it, watch it for another year, then look at it. If it does not produce results, then cut it off. There's a need for us to cut off an NPC and take this body away from us. There's a need for us to invest in agriculture. There's a particular story that said export of rice, we had Nigerian fifteen billion dollars. Fifteen billion dollars we come from if we export rice. What steps are we taking to, to, to that effect? The money we have spent on refinery that is not working. Let private investors operate in that and okay. let's invest in agriculture and then we we'll make money from Nigeria. Okay. And we we'll take Nigeria from being a monoproduct economy to a multi-product economy. And then that's the diversification which we are looking at. And we don't rely on oil. When the price of oil drops, then we have problems with the economy. All right, but when we invest in other sectors, I think we become energy dependent and we'll be less dependent on, on oil as the source of income for Nigeria. And All we right. don't have to print money like the central bank did, uh, as, 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 as alleged by the governor of Edo State. Thank All you need to do, much. government worldwide, United States of America is printing money. So when they are deceiving us that they did print money, all you need to do is to look at price index of commodity product and to look at the inflationary. Yesterday, I bought a oil to service my generator. The oil, you know how much I bought it the last time? I bought it 1,500. You know how much I bought it yesterday? We bought it 2,500. 2,300, and I was sharing my experience with my friend. He said, no, he bought his own 2,500. What was sold, 1,500, has increased to 2,500. There's, you want to know that your currency is valueless. 10 Naira cannot buy you anything. Well, Mr. Jiri Johnson, I'm, I'm, I'm sure the, the rest of Nigerians, or almost the 200 million of us, do share your pain. You know, thank you very much, Mr. Jiri Johnson, for your time on The Breakfast. It's a pleasure to be with you. A pleasure. Oh my, I really was saying that yesterday. I went to do some shopping yesterday and I came back telling my friend, would you believe how much I bought this? And she said, I remember when we used to buy this particular item for 20 Naira and now it's it's just Sadly, absurd. when things go up in Nigeria, and they never come down. You know, it just, you know, continues to, you know, to rise. Um, and uh, millions and millions of Nigerians would have to, of course, continue to adjust. Are you, are you, you know, saying Nigeria's problems defy the law of gravity? Yes, they don't, they they don't do, come absolutely. down. Absolutely. <laughs> Good morning. Stay with us. We have uh, Today in History coming next. I'm going back to 2013 to share with you what happened on this day, um, uh, 14th of May. Yes, yeah, still 2013 as well. Do stay with us.